Okay, so Mark here from Rock and Load. This morning, I am joined by the fantabulous people of Bo Grigri and the Apocalypse. The guys have just dropped a beautiful record, Good Times and Times, and are in the UK currently supporting that album. So make sure you check out the website for available dates and catch them live. This morning, I have uh, vocalist Greta Valenti and guitarist Robin Davey. How are you guys doing? Good, Good how things. are you? I am super duper, super duper. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so guys, what is it actually like being back on the road after two crazy years? It's um <clears throat> it's strange. I mean, I think that the there's a uh there's a cautiousness in people um yeah. in from an audience perspective, <clears throat> but then also as the evening goes on, everyone kind of feels a little bit more comfortable with the situation and let go. And, and so the shows have actually been fantastic, I think, because of that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, but it's yeah, it's weird. It's weird to be out about, you know, meeting people, shaking people's hands. It's a whole different world or or not shaking people's hands. And yeah, whatever. everyone's comfortable <laughs> with. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, from my perspective, I actually had COVID like three, four weeks ago. So right it's before. Right okay. before tour. So I feel a little immune to it. So I'm a little more comfortable thinking yeah. like I pro I'm unlikely to, <laughs> to get it. So um, whereas other members of the band haven't. And so we're, we're just ultra cautious. And we're also cautious about the, the audience members and where they're at and, yeah. and what, yeah. what they feel comfortable with. So it's a, it's a very strange time. It's, it must be nigh impossible to try and juggle it because obviously you want that full concert experience. But at the same time, times have changed so dramatically. So it's it's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But, but when I, I think everyone is kind of being respectful of everyone else, and that's a cool thing. And we're just trying to make make the shows the best best they can be, and and we're having a great time. So yeah. it's, it's it feels good to be out and out and about. And what about the um, performance aspect after being off the road for so long? Was that something that took a little while to get back into? Yeah, yeah. I'm oh. having a real problem with wah wah foot because I do this one solo, <laughs> which is wah wah. And I'm my my foot is not match fit when it comes to wah wah ing. Yeah. You should have been training this yeah, whole I should time. Have, like, you have two I should years have every to day, train. I should have been wowing. Yeah. Yes. Wow wow wowing. <laughs> RSI injuries. I know. Desperate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about you? Your set. What about vocally, Greta? How have you coped? It's been good. I mean, I knew it's always. I mean, your vocals are kind of. You know, it's it's like a muscle. It's like being in shape. So I knew I had to be extra careful because. Anytime you've taken a break from touring and you go back on tour, your voice gets tired quicker and all those things. So um, we've been fortunate to have a sound engineer, Jerome Bach, with us on this tour. And that has helped me immensely because I have in-ears that I'm using and I'm not over, yeah. you, you know, overusing my voice, trying not to shout so much and actually sing and take care of my voice. So I was like... I was like almost losing it for a couple of days. So I had one show where I was like a little bit like nervous and, but last night was great again. And so I'm feeling good about it now. I'm, I feel like I made it to like the home stretch of, yeah. you know, yeah. we just have one weekend left. So I feel like it's made it, but definitely like, you know, kind of building up that um, endurance again. Yeah, That's for sure. Weird. You know, touring is a very specific thing. It's, a, it's, you know, the whole, the whole process, the whole rigmarole of like, you know, <laughs> traveling in a van you know eating crap food after from yeah. gas stations uh, you know in the middle of the night and it takes a toll on you and if you're not match fit if you're you know so it's it has been kind of like a little bit of oh yeah this is this is what comes with the the excitement of getting on stage and playing for people it's like that all that other stuff you deal with so um and i think that as a result of that a lot of bands are probably going back and going why are we doing this mm. yeah but I would say us, so. <laughs> it, yeah it's like what what kind of life is this? And I think, um, and and in that respect, I think you then really appreciate those the time you have on stage and the and the the effort that people make to come out and see you and buy a ticket because again they don't have to, you know. Yeah. They have the same thing. They're like, the, actually, I kind of like sitting at home in the comfort of my, you know, watching TV and watching movies or whatever. So some people might prefer their Oculus. So yeah. I, you yeah. know, yeah. I appreciate everyone that is still and you know that loves live music and the live energy. That's what. You know, I was, I've been performing on stage since I was four. That's just kind of, I don't know why, but that's what I'm meant to do. So I am very happy to be back on stage and, you know, I get energy off of people and it's, so it's great to actually have a real audience to, yeah. you know, share energy with. Mm. 
Yeah, you touched on it there because I was I was interested. I was looking at the website last night, and your video for "What's My Name" it sort of sums up life in a band, and in, in that yeah. two, or, two or three minutes, like you you can see the contrast of the various stages that you play on. It's like a large stage to a tiny club where you're literally standing on top of people, and then life mm -hmm. in in a cramped van and even falling asleep on the stage. You know, in between sign checks or whatever. It's just it's not a life for everybody. No. Absolutely not. It's a lot. It's like, I just say it's like being in the circus. It's like circus <laughs> life, the, like being on the road and like having um, that, you know, I always, I used to always think the song was cheesy, but now that I've, I've lived the road life, I love on the road again by Willie Nelson. Like it makes me cry now when I hear it. Cause I'm like, the life I love is making music with my friends. It's just such a good, like, it really is that. And it, you know, it's such a cool thing to get to do, to travel, and, you know, the best part about touring is we make friends all over the world. So people that are fans really become our friends. And the fact that we haven't seen our friends in so long and, you know, there have been a lot of tears, like one of the, I've had a couple of grown men crying at me. I'm like, are you crying? But, you know, it's just been like emotional. We haven't seen each other. And, you know, we're all people that love music and love this life. So it's been, it's been nice to see people. Yeah. And tell me a little bit, how did you two guys come together? Because obviously you, you, you're you back in the band Well Hung Heart initially. So when did you initially pair up? Well, we um, we were in separate bands and we, we actually uh, entered music videos into the very first YouTube music video competition. And probably I think the very it was their, first and the only. Yeah, first and only ever. Um, and so we, <clears throat> we were both uh, living in Southern California and and um Greta wrote my band a message saying hey I saw your video we're in the same competition and we just got talking as friends and then fast forward a few years and we we became they had cool creative videos and that's you know I was in, working in the film industry at the time and I'm loved that they were making these kind of homemade videos and we my band had just made our first kind of bigger production music video so I just was like inspired by their creativity and we just we were, became friends we were MySpace friends for years and he was with someone and his band and I was with someone in my band at the time. And after, you know, a few years, like those relationships dissolved separately and we were still friends. And then we were like, Hey, you're cute. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we became a couple. So we became, we became a, a couple, couple first. Yeah. And then we started working together second because I already had a, a creative company I had started where I was doing design and wanted to do get into movies and that side more. And Robin was already doing that. So it just kind of made sense. We just started working together. Yeah, and then absolutely. eventually we were like, we should probably be in a band together. Since... Yeah, we, we partnered up in all aspects. And, yeah. and now we're, we're just kind of, yeah, we do everything together. And um, everyone always says, <clears throat> everyone's always surprised. And, you know, they ask, how, how does that work? You know, but for us, it's just, it just makes sense. You know, we... your parents are that way. Like, yeah, my parents have been together for for you know since um since my mom was 18 i think or 17 or something it's 18, yeah. yeah you know so 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 they're both creative artists people who work were, together all the time and um, um whereas greta's like you know single parent <laughs> and um only child so it's a very different thing but i think we formed that kind of bond together where... so i need friends because i have no one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, what about the well hung heart project is that still ongoing or is it just sort of been a hiatus it with it is the, yeah were... i mean before the pandemic the plan was record this bogrigri album which was like december 2019 and then we were going to go on tour with bogrigri in march and then we had plans in may of 2020 to bring our original drummer out phil wilson who lives in the uk he was going to come back and record um a well hung heart album and then just everything fell to shit obviously yeah. with the pandemic and everything um so we're just kind of re-situating but i think that might happen this year i think yeah, it's looking it's, good it's you know like with any of our projects like the, the, there's no there's no need to split it up it's not like that doesn't exist anymore yeah. we just kind of it's still shift priorities and so yeah it's definitely that you know so often we come up you know touring with Bo Grigri or just anything we do you know we get messages of well hung heart fans we did a lot with that band we toured a lot in america we opened for foreigner we opened for fits and the tantrums offspring did a lot of really cool stuff so we made a lot of fans um it just it, it got to a point where we were like we we really need to rethink this 
Yeah. Um, and we really wanted to do something that was quite different and more musical and more songwriting based and which, uh, you know, showcase Greta's range as a vocalist much more than the, the punky kind of ethic of Well Hung Heart. I don't so, think people realize how hard it is to sing rock music. So they just think you're screaming. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can sing. I wanted to like <laughs> prove I could sing. But I think now we have that. So I think we can kind of reapproach Well Hung Heart in a new way. And yeah. Um, you know, we had different, we've gone through different kind of lineups with that band. So I think with Welcome Heart, we'll definitely be bringing it back to kind of more the original lineup and kind of going back to some some roots with that for sure. Yeah. So it's still there. Yeah, we just... and you, I suppose it gives you an, an alternative creative outlet with a, a different sort of genre and just being able to spread your wings. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And in the pandemic, we actually, we built our own studio space. So that was purely so we can do all these things and just explore and 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 not not necessarily have to go okay now we have to book a Rent studio, a studio. We have to, it's always there so if we ever get the well hung heart bug it would be just be like let's go in for a week and just do it you know yeah. we can now so i think that was an important thing for us just to to have a space which was our own i think it's important for every band and i know that so many bands that can't be in that position to have their own space and they're constantly struggling to find it or rent a space or you know we we recorded our for our, all our albums up until this point in our house just <laughs> yeah. in our kitchen in our you know because we have understanding neighbors and they they were like no we love hearing you play and we were like yeah. okay well, we'll this, keep doing ne it. <laughs> this next week we'll finish at 10 o'clock but up until that time you're going to be hearing drums and guitars and um so which has been great you know and and again a lot of people don't have understanding neighbors so yeah. um it's it's you have to be resourceful being in a band and uh, thankfully we're at a point now where we being able to build a studio and I think that that's gonna it's not, just, our... it's not just one room but it's you know acoustically sound and we just recorded our first another artist um Ian Siegel who's a blues artist in the UK um we just recorded his album there so it's great to kind of break in a, a record in the studio and mm. we're excited to dive in there we got some cool gear going and some vintage gear and yeah. and we love yeah. collaboration so it's a, just a great collaboration space for yeah. us to, to do whatever with whoever and, and the yeah. film me up music video was filmed in there so it's that black and white 60s motown looking yeah vibe right. yeah and obviously with the digital age you have that luxury of being able to walk as you say walk into the studio create and then distribute if you want to immediately um how do you find the challenge of the modern music industry today with all the bullshit surrounding it trying to get your uh, information out there yeah that there's so much noise you know and, and everyone is 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 vying for um uh position within that noise and um there is, yeah there's a lot of uh at the same time you can do anything yeah so i think it's important not to be the, the suckiest thing for bands is that the it's so hard to earn money it's so hard to find your <clears> your um you know just money to come in to fund everything yeah that's why we have another business and our other business funds this so yeah. um, because we just love playing in a band and i think that's important but we also us. do almost everything ourselves like we're not paying yeah. we, you know we've never paid for i think we've only i don't even know if we've ever if well hung heart I think once we paid for studio time and we got like a super good deal when we yeah. worked with Avery. Yeah. Um, but we've always done everything ourselves. So we save money that way. We've all done our own, we always do our own videos. So, I mean, you can do things without spending money. Obviously there's certain things you need or you need to borrow a computer, but I mean, even everyone's phone is a 4k camera these days. And yeah. you have, you know, I, I, I know it's big in the UK. We don't really, I didn't know about it in the U S but band lab i've been playing on that app it's great because yeah. i was like i just want like a four track recorder so i can just put ideas down and you know you can do anything now i think it's just figuring out what's probably overwhelming for bands is that you can do anything and there's so many things and you have to be everything you have to be a marketer you have to be yeah. a creative you have to like be an accountant you have to like and we run a business, so we've like been forced to learn all these things. Um, so we and, now know it, but it is, it can be overwhelming that way. But I, I think it's also amazing that we can make something, put it out and, you know, thousands of people could see it instantly. Yeah, really. That's amazing. And, and to be <laughs> honest, you know, not a lot has changed since the old business. The old business was you know, everyone vying for, for shelf space in HMV and it, and, and it came down to whoever had the most money got the most shelf space. It's kind of the same thing, except the shelf space is social media and whoever has the most money gets the most shelf space on, so, on social media. So mm -hmm. you can, you can um, there is still 
uh, ways to organically grow your audience. It takes time, you know, it takes originality, it takes luck. But that was all the old music industry too. So it's yeah. just, it's shifting. Just adapting to adapting and 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 um yeah and and not getting too bogged down with with all the shit that's flying around and 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 the, the feed that's constantly flying past you. You know, it's like be concentrate on what you're doing and concentrate on finding your audience. No matter how niche that is, that's the start. Find your niche yeah. audience and grow from there. You know. Yeah, I think it's don't really... try and compete with the big boys because you never will. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was just going to say, I think it's really important to understand what success is in the modern in- music industry, and not to set that bar so high that um, it's unattainable. Yes, mm. and you're just always going to then be depressed because yeah, yeah. you're never going to reach this crazy. Yeah. Last last night we sold out a show on a Tuesday night, and yeah. uh, there was you know. A room full of we got a standing ovation uh, yeah standing ovation a room full of music lovers and you know that that's success to me like you know you you get in a room people go away and they they buy your album on the way out they have a great evening they tell their friends i think people going away from an evening and telling their friends about it that's the ultimate success because next time they'll bring five friends and suddenly you're growing a career you know um word of mouth still is number one to me and word of mouth is great now because it's can be on a facebook feed you know it's not necessarily seeing someone down far further reach now with the social media yeah yeah Yeah. and so tell me about the new album then so um what was the inspiration and and uh how did that come to come to be so we wrote it we actually recorded it before the pandemic uh, December 2019 because we had plans to tour in March 2020 which we were going to leave on a, a Thursday and or on a Tuesday and the Thursday before the world was just shut down and that's when just everything you know stopped so a lot of it you know our band name is Bo Grigri and the Apocalypse you know it's we already have the kind of apocalypse end of the world <laughs> themes going visionaries um, so I was, yeah, I was already kind of writing the album with those things in mind. I mean, there's all, there was already things going, especially in America. There's a lot of yeah. turmoil with Trump being in office. There's global warming things happening. There's, you know, there's a lot going on already. And then, so we had recorded kind of all the musical parts of the album pretty much. Um, but I, most of the songs were done, but not totally. So I would say like, so once the pandemic hit, it just really like amplified everything. It just really, it made every, I mean, Bungalow Paradise, I had written already and it just was like exactly what we were going through. And I'm like, did I just, did I, did I cause this to happen? No, I'm not that narcissistic, but it was like, so just fitting that it was just like, you know, it was, I felt like we were already doing that in some ways. We were already like, it's about sitting at home and kind of just watching the world go by as you kind of live in this fantasy in your own house. And so we were doing that. And then suddenly we were, we were all doing that. We were all like forced to just be in our houses and kind of make a little world in our, in our space for the time being to kind of cope. So I think it just really amplified putting the album together. And so as we mixed the album, you know, and really finished it throughout the pandemic, it just kind of, it just all like made sense. And then we didn't come up with the title until the end. And it just like, it just all came together. It just felt like this is this is a complete piece, and it just is oddly fitting to this this time. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, <laughs> there's some again talking about social media, talking about the connectivity. There's so much negativity that gets thrown at you all the time. Negativity um, is a way to fuel um, interaction, and, and and a lot of media, yeah. I think, you know delve into that um and so and we've all been forced to live that the last uh, it's been a lot of a lot of that the last two years so i think that even though the album has those apocalyptic themes it it feels positive to me you know it's it's like a well it's like know, how do we make the best of the situation like we you know you can either give up or not to yeah. me that's the two choices you're either gonna give up or you're gonna not give up and if you're not gonna give up you might as well have a good attitude about it and move forward and I think that's what, you know, we always do. It's like, even when we have a, a setback or a disappointment, it's like, you know, how do you pick yourself up by your bootstraps and keep going? Learn from it and move on, yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, think it's a, I think that's the thing. Like, it's it's end times, but hey, let's make it good times. You know, that's how I see it. And I, I think Greta probably sees it different ways and everyone can interpret that t- interpret that title however they like. But yeah. to me, it's a 
the thing yeah yeah and as you say like uh, every single day we have choices and i think that's an important message out there that you you, you determine how your day is going to go by your attitude ultimately you know so we'll all be facing setbacks and challenges from day to day so you just have to pick yourself up and get the head down um 2020 was such an explosive and crazy time as well like you talk about covid but you talk about the elections the chaos in america like we were all glued to our televisions being trapped in our homes 24 hours a day the black lives yeah. matter so it was one of the most crazy crazy times and you almost forget about that because of the covid narrative that keeps being pushed at us but the, the music part of it is so cathartic isn't it to help you yeah. move on beyond that there so the, and especially getting back into the live venues supporting bands seeing that again and just getting some sort of sense of normality so important yeah, for sure and and humanity i think we because we've been just separated from each other and i think the more you know the more we're separated from each other the easier it is for people to turn us against each other so i think you know reminding everyone that we're all humans we all have this you know the same needs and wants and have empathy for each other so i think that's yeah. important i think you know like when you have when you have discussions via text messages or via emails and then, and then you this this kind of we even uh, had we had some band arguments that kind of came up just because you know because we were messaging over text message and yeah. someone took one you know take something as attitude and like well this, this happens in business this happens in relationships this happens in friendships and and that's because you're a lack of being in a room together because if you're in a room together you see yeah. facial expressions yeah you see even just a yeah. zoom is much better than you see the you know. sarcasm in the comment but if you yeah. if it's written on a page like you know um and emojis don't cut it when it comes to, <laughs> yeah. to that so i think that yeah you know that and and trump and and like you know that that whole and brexit you know a very divisive kind of um rhetoric it's like you know that that was all part of the the everyone dealing with sickness fear of sickness um fear of losing jobs fear of how they're going to pay their rent it's just amped up and i think mm -hmm. for me playing live music or watching live music is the chance to kind of go away from that and be in a room of like-minded people who are all digging this art form that has so much it's, ent it's entertainment if a band is entertaining to watch there's that but then there's also there's the emotion of of the music and then there's the and the, what the lyrics are saying and, and the, the lyrics you know yeah. i try to write lyrics you know i mean on our past album we have don't let the bastards drag you down which is still a very relevant song and you know we have some we have a uh, radio friend who plays at the end of his show every week it's kind of his theme song now but it's just i you know we try to write things that are encouraging or that i want to you know remember myself that i i need to be reminded of so you know sometimes it's that you know and I think those are the songs that stick with people is something that gets you through your day or that reminds you of a time and hopefully yeah. has meaning I, I know the best <laughs> concerts that I've been to and seen I've I've come out of I've come out of thinking actually the world's okay <laughs> you know yeah actually yeah. we're doing pretty good actually you Humans know are okay yeah for the actually I'm I'm inspired to create after this evening actually I feel <laughs> good about being a musician or I feel good about being like that's what a good concert does for me and so you know, hopefully that's what we can achieve with ours um and and create that vibe of like people going away going actually that you know i feel pretty good about things and and but there is a lot of you know there's a lot of movies that do that but then there's also but you put the news on and it's just constantly like Dooming everything's him. terrible you're gonna lose your job we're probably all gonna die tomorrow you know and it's like actually no things things are pretty good and so we hope that the vibe that people get from us is actually things are pretty good <laughs> or what can we do to to make a positive impact instead of yeah just being negative all the time yeah. so. well i mean we're not perfect <laughs> god no. like the obviously amount, yeah the amount of time <laughs> that we get drawn into that bullshit too and then it's like it, you have to force yourself out of it force yeah. yourself not to get into that facebook argument about fucking the color blue or whatever i don't know yeah you know I think that's one of the things that uh, the biggest takeaway I've, I've got in the last couple of years is the misinformation in media, the, the simple fact with social media, especially you can't trust it. Now, Facebook determining themselves as um, 
the, the, the givers of truth and determining what is truth and all this shit, you know, like Jesus Christ, you know, we have to sort of be a little bit smarter and self-educate ourselves and be a bit more aware yeah. because it is, it's been such a divisive time and such a horrible time and we all need to heal really coming out of this now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think one thing we've kind of learned is like, you know, <clears throat> uh, we, we know plenty of people that have very differing views of ours politically or, and you, ultimately though i think you, you get some crazies you know you do and there, there's no hope right but also, a lot of the people who who just have differing views whether it be religious political whatever ultimately they they work in this exactly the same way as you they've just had different information and they've been brought up differently and but they they want to be nice people they want to do the best and if there is anything where they're not everyone not no i'm saying not everyone <laughs> but you know but you can have friends as, uh, that are that have these differing views and it doesn't or, have to be the end. Or, or we don't have to be friends with everyone. Yeah, I think that's a different, that's I think true. Facebook's like convinced us that we need to be friends with 5,000 people. And, you know, we used to just be friends with our immediate contacts and it's, yeah. I think it's skewed the world a bit. And I think, you know, I think it's good. We need, we need to see different points of view. We need to be able to have discussions and and also people need to be reminded Facebook and Instagram, they're an ad company. They're yeah. all, all they're trying to do is sell ads and, and, and get your information and see how you work. And they're a psychology, uh, they're, you know, they're using psychology to sell you things yeah. because we, you know, we uh, live in a capitalist country and I know UK has become very similar in some ways. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think if you can keep in mind the platforms you're on and be, just be aware and, and it, I think a lot of people now know, you know, that your feeds are being fed to you and, you know, it might not be what everyone is seeing and what's reality. So I think. And that being said, please buy our album yeah. <laughs> out now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think as you're right on so many levels there, I think we have to sort of reevaluate our relationship with big tech and maybe yeah. um, because, because it's so fresh, just obviously we're, we're just one of the new generations coming through this. So we're adapting. And I think we have to sort of, as you say, reevaluate, step back and, and understand we are just literally uh, sheep that we're being sold things, as, as you say, regardless yeah. of, of what the platform is. And, and being going, sold, like, sorry. I mean, we talked about it too. I know we're running out of time, but also just being sold that we're not satisfied with things. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like constant like consumption of like, yeah. you need this. Oh, that's not enough. You now need this thing. Oh, you need the next thing. Like, it's like never enough. And I think that's what actually the pandemic in a lot of ways was a good reset for people of like, wait, do I like my job? Do I like what I'm doing? Do I need to, I, I mean, I didn't buy any clothes for like yeah. a year and a half and it was amazing. I'm like, I mean, this actually, this one sweater was the only thing I bought. I bought one <sighs> nice sweater and it says, <laughs> and it was designed by Nick Cave uh, for Bella Freud. So it's like, but I'm like, that's the perfect one thing to buy during the pandemic. And I bought it for my birthday. What it says? It oh yeah, it says head high and fuck them all. <laughs> and it's <laughs> <laughs> perfect, per- perfect message to end the interview then i'd say yeah. well look guys well, thank you very much for your time thank you i just want to say the antithesis of all this bullshit to me is being in a room and watching live music and and sh- being in that enclosed space away from all of that so i think that that brings it back to that thing of just that's why it feels so good to be out on the road and absolutely yeah. With people like we are, so. yeah thank Absolutely. you for having us yeah, thank no, you. my pleasure pleasure once again uh bo gree gree and the apocalypse and uh Greta and Robin, congratulations, guy. Enjoy the rest of your tour and uh, best of luck for 2022, isn't it? 2022, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Take care. We'll catch you on the other Bye. side. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Mark. Bye. Bye.